Omaha Vicious is a team on the rise, taking fourth place at the Chicago Open after fighting their way out of the Challengers division in Maryland. New coach Todd Martinez is helping them out with the leadership that they've needed, and they're getting contributions from everyone on the team, especially veteran Zach Sherman, their highest ranked player. Vicious is developing multiple weapons in the first attacker position with the pickup of Luis Munoz and Keith DeVitt. And they're getting Phil Kank back, which will help Ryan Bortle and Shane Colby up in front. With great support, one of the best coaches, a solid core, and young killers who want to get reps and get better, keep a close watch on the boys from Omaha Vicious, who could finally fulfill their quest to win a professional event in 2013. With a reignited fire for the game, San Antonio X Factor has trained hard since the beginning of 2012. But despite their efforts, the best that they've been able to finish this season is sixth place at the Mid-Atlantic Open. Plagued with penalties, X Factor just hasn't been able to get their full squad rolling, though they've shown that they can beat big teams and have avoided getting relegated to the Challengers division. The team's core has been playing together for a long time and contains the talent to win tournaments. The rookie, Dimitri Ninos, is playing solid this year, as is veteran all-star Archie Montemayor, who's their highest ranked player. With 10 wins and three world championships, Moscow Red Legion is the most successful PSP team ever, but they've struggled in the first half of the 2013 season. After losing their first attackers on both sides of the field at the end of 2012, Moscow's had a hard time filling those positions with players that attack consistently and efficiently. After getting relegated down to the Challengers division, they developed a new effective approach, blew the field away, and won every game as they fought their way back into the Champions League. Rookie Kevin Klum, veteran Kirill Pridney, Dennis Golev and last year's Top Gun Award winner Alexander Bernikov are all playing well this season, and the whole Red Legion squad is looking for redemption at the PSP West Coast Open. Welcome to Saturday's competition here at the 2013 PSP West Coast Open. We are about to watch Omaha Vicious take on Moscow Red Legion. I'm Matty Marshall alongside Steve Rabikoff and Chris Lasoya. Welcome back. Hope you guys got a chance to check out yesterday's amazing games because, wow, we had some crazy games yesterday. We had some blow a couple blowouts, but mostly, man, there's some really entertaining paintball yesterday. We're expecting the same thing today. So, guys, what do you think about this first matchup between Vicious and Moscow Red Legion? Uh, if the vicious team that showed up from Chicago arrives this morning, we're gonna have a great game. If, mm -hmm. if the team from Dallas shows up, then or it's from gonna yesterday, be a, yeah, or yesterday, it's gonna be a rough day because the Russian Legion guys, man, they played they played really good yesterday. I mean, yeah, they had a little gift from uh, Houston Heat with that that penalty, but that's that's part of the game. You got to take those gifts. Yeah, I totally agree. And you know, Chris, you're gonna get penalties. They're gonna come. You can't make excuses. And Look, it, it, you get one major. One major should not submarine a team like Houston Heat. You right. can't put the blame just on one major penalty. Yeah, it's an explanation, but not an excuse. Well, right. there, the, you know, the dreaded three-point, you know, comeback yeah. or, mm -hmm. or differential on that ma every every major yesterday, people were getting three points. It seemed, and, yeah, it seemed like that. And now, traditionally, it's not always that way, but correct. yesterday, because as the day progressed, you kind of pointed that out. It seemed like every single time somebody got a major penalty, a team got a major that the other team would run up three points. All right, so here we go. First point on the split screen breakout. Moscow on your left-hand side, and here comes Vicious on the right-hand side, doubling up, but they lose Brian Bortle off the break, and it looks like they also lose Phil Kank, and they didn't have much production from Kank or Bortle yesterday, and it's not looking good. It's Looks like two more guys dying out of their spots. Spots is Parker, uh, Parker Rosenthal and Matt Sosman. So it's just Zach Sherman left alive, looking at four bodies for Moscow, though they did lose one off the break as Pavel Lukashuk takes the walk early. But it's not looking good for Vicious right now. Yeah, you know, right now Vicious, they came out of the box trying to make something happen up the middle. You know, Moscow Red Legion, Todd, I, Todd and I spoke earlier, our co-host up here, fourth member of our broadcast, and he had actually said, man, they're shooting really good lanes. They have good paint. Uh, good paint. They're really looking forward to this game. But, you know, they got to be careful what if they don't overextend. Uh, that way they're not going to lose so many guys in the breaks. And it, unfortunately, I think he got the latter part of that right but there. But the thing was, though, is I don't really think they overextended. I, they had they doubled up the back center, and they got Bortle, sh and Bortle uh, got shot as he tried to get up in the center. And they didn't extend out wide at all. So I don't know if Moscow... If their shots are just on right right away, first point of the morning, running out, you know, because that's the thing is if you're the guy in the center, most likely unless one just 
Ball dips in, you're getting shot as those, because paintball's a game of angles. So the guys that are running out wide are shooting inside, the guys that are staying inside are shooting out wide. Yep. So, and they lost Bortle up the, up the center, so. And they lost, they lost a player going out to Dorito 1 on the break, so that, that's mm. a risky run anyway, that, so. Yeah, Dorito 1 is, is definitely and, a risky and, run, but, and, but out of all the runs out there, probably the least risky, because yeah. a lot more guns have seemed to have shifted toward the snake side, yeah. at least yesterday. As we were talking about before we came on live here, is that Chris was walking out on the field yesterday, we were both walking out there, and that, that uh, snake side uh, temple and corner, it is not easy to get out there. It it's is a rough. difficult. Like difficult. I, w I was wondering myself, and I, me and Maddie and I were talking. We we're like, "Hey, man, why is everybody getting shot out there? Because up, <laughs> up here, it looks pretty easy." I went down that field, and I was like, "Oh, never mind. Okay, that, that explains everything. Huge lanes. Yeah. If, if you're shooting well on the break, you're going to get die." But it's interesting because we've seen a lot of aggression on the snake side. We've seen a lot of bodies drop off that side. So it's it's kind of one of those things that we we spoke about this yesterday. The thing is, is on a, on a field layout like this, where you're going to have bodies drop off the break is the guy, the, the players and the teams that have that field vision, that ability to, okay, sense, okay, how many guys in front of me dropped? I'm gonna take advantage of that. Or, oh, wait a second, we lost some guys, I'm gonna have to dig in now, adjust to the situation. Yeah, field awareness, you, you mentioned that yesterday, and I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of players out there that have that, but some of these younger players aren't quite in tune with some a good field awareness. They're good paintball players that get up there, they're very aggressive. Well, you're going to have to pull audibles midpoint, man. It, it, On this the field, field you need... Absolutely, <laughs> because, you know, the coach is going to sit there and go, okay, here's the deal. Uh, we're going to go three to one off the break, two in the back center, you know, whatever the game plan is. And But at the same time, this is more than any field we've seen this year, one of those fields that, okay, you got the game plan, but... 10 seconds in, you might have to chuck that game plan out the window and then pull an audible and adjust, which is really going to benefit teams that are that, like Dynasty. Dynasty played great yesterday. Yeah, they can they, they can audible it up easy. And here's Russian Legion losing a player on the break right away and Vicious, so they're both both four on four right now. And Brian Bortle having a rough go of it this weekend so far. He just hasn't got much play time. I mean, over the whole course of these three games, he hasn't got much play time at all, Matt. He's been getting shot in the break a lot. I'm um, getting shot out of his bunker real quick after there. And there goes, there, there goes. Christopher Hooker, and he's been having a little bit of a rough time in the back there as well, so. Put on your screen right there now. Clum going to work. Yeah, Kevin Clum is, uh, or no, it's I'm Kovar. sorry, Mike, Mikael Kovar. Yeah, uh, sorry. Kovar. We... And Kovar struggled a little bit yesterday, but had a couple really good points too, so a little hit and miss. Ooh, so Kovar tries to get all the way down. May awesome job by Zach Sherman to get in there. He's counter just, punch. Kovar's looking back going, man, come on, guys. I'm going all the way down their side yeah, of the he, field. And all you got to do is take care of me. He's got two guys behind him. So Jason Wheeler, and I can't see who's right behind him, but uh, yeah, so Kovar extended as far as he could. But that was just a great move by Zach Sherman. Now Zach Sherman doing damage control. He's going to have to get a couple kills. But hey, look, when, when you're losing guys off the break, or you're getting penalties and you only got four, what are you going to do, just give up? No. Yeah, exactly. Try I mean, to find a way to win. Yeah. He, he made a great move right there. I mean, I think I would have went to the corner and shot him that way. I'm not sure if actually, oh, and he loses another player on the other side of the field. It's number 31 right there, Trevor Reeser. So it's just Zach Sherman who act, played awesome in practice leading oh, up to this event. Zach Sherman is chewing bodies up right now. Zach Sherman wants to win, man. He's in there, he's getting kills, made an awesome move, take out Kovar, he takes out Wheeler. Now he gets, unfortunately for him, still a three-on-one situation here, and he finally gets taken out, so. But he's battling all the way through there, that's what you want. Yeah, great move, right, actually, but to try and plug that hole that uh, Mikhail Kovar was about to blow to pieces. Um, you know, I'm not sure if, if Mikhail knew he was there, actually. Yeah, I, well, he, or he piped. He, he could have been. He, he knew he was there. He just figured his two the guys right behind him, his two players, were just going to make sure he didn't get to come out and exactly. stick it. Exactly. Yeah, I think you know about that, Steve. I think yeah, sometimes. we're playing behind you. Of course I did. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we get Touche. Get it started already. Yeah, it's early, it's early already. already. <laughs> Sweet. It's going to uh, be an entertaining morning on and off the field here. But Brian Bortle, we haven't seen, uh, we, you know, we talked about this yesterday, Maddie. We haven't seen a lot of production out of some of these players that are making moves on a normal basis. Well, um, Brian Bortle. He's, he has a high level of talent. He's been playing the game for a long time. Brian Bortle, we've seen him have some good points. Uh, Brian Bortle, Zach Sherman, and Parker Rosenthal in a couple games. I mean, there was one particular game. They combined for 36 kills in one game, and we haven't seen much production out of them at this event. They need their core members to play well. They have some new pickups, but they, they, need, they need those guys to play solid. So we'll see if they can pick it up here. Uh, they are down 2-0 to zero right now. We'll be right back after this.
so down two points right now. Omaha Vicious still struggling just like they were yesterday. Uh, yesterday, Vicious lost to Dynasty 7-1, to and then they also lost to Houston Heat 7-1. to They had a real tough bracket, but hey, when you're in the Champions Division, there are no easy brackets, and you got to beat the best to be the best. It just, it's the way it is. So let's see if Vicious can get it done here as they double up the back center. Can they get five out alive and try to shoot someone off the break? And it looks like Moscow does lose a body, but they lose Zach Sherman. Uh, Vicious loses Zach Sherman as well. And Phil Kink. And here's a name we haven't seen in the snake much and, and called out was Colby. Yeah, Colby struggled yesterday. He could not get out here alive, but he's in the snake. And hopefully for Vicious, he's is clean. So Colby in good field position over here. Kevin Klum getting a point in the snake for Moscow. It's been Klum and Kovar in the snake for this year, and they've both been hit or miss. Kevin Klum's been stepping it up lately, and Kovar had a, some good points yesterday, some bad points, and Colby really struggled, like I was saying, but now he's in a good position. Can he get kills from there, though? You're looking at Colby on your screen right now. 16 minutes and two seconds left to go here in this match. Red Legion in the driver's seat, and it looks like Kevin Klum is going to try to run the highway on Colby. He's it's Kevin Klum is going to get blown oh, wow. apart. I don't know what he was. Did he think that he shot Colby? What was he, he did. doing? I, he, he definitely thought he did, for sure. Yeah, so Kevin Klum, mental mistake there. He probably should have just and went and dropped the yeah, hammer. You've got to go. You're that close. you got to get him off the field. You can't, even if you get taken out, so what? you got, you got your players behind you. you got to go finish him. You can't spend that much time outside of a bunker. Yeah, I, I still think he, oh, he got clipped right there, as you've seen. Um, but what a good job by Shane Colby getting the snake and trying to slow them down a little bit. Now losing their last player alive. That's Sossman taking the walk for Omaha Vicious. So they're going to go down 3-0 right now, Matty. Uh, well... It, at least they're, they are putting up a, a fight right now, but they are just getting beat to the punch. Um, the first two points off the break, but here, this was a pretty even break. They yeah, got at least Colby got into the, the snake. We, like you said, we haven't said his name much this weekend. That's like, he gets in the snake there finally, but he, lose, he lost three players on the break, so. Yeah. yeah, so, well, can Omaha Vicious pick it back up here? The score now is going to be 3 to 0 as Golev and Pantaleev were left alive for Moscow Red Legion to hang that flag up. So we're gonna be right back after these messages, stick around. Check this out. The Imperial program from GI Sports. Get 100% of your paint money back in cash. Sign up, win, paint's free. Take second, get half your paint cash back. Not good enough? How about more cash? Have your team rock our V-Force GI logo grills, get first place, then we'll throw you another thousand bucks cash. Second place, no problem. We got 500 bucks with your name on it. It's a total no-brainer. Sign up for the Imperial program at gisports.com. Paintballdojo.com. Support your favorite pro team. Get your name printed on pro team gear. Paintballdojo.com. Lifestyle gear for players. Full color and completely custom options. Can build a custom design straight from our website. Gear available for both men and women. PaintballDojo.com. Lifestyle gear for players. So lots of big games this morning as we will start to finally figure out who is going to be advancing and who is going to be potentially playing uh, to avoid getting relegated. So much at stake at this tournament. The fourth event historically has been kind of just a tune-up. Maybe try to you know extend your season points lead or get ready for World Cup. Uh, but historically kind of the least prestigious of all the tournaments to win as a uh, World Cup obviously that's the holy grail of paintball Chicago is always traditionally a really hard one to win Houston Heat won that one a couple months ago but right now man it is do or die time for a lot of these teams if you don't play well at this event and you're in the Champions League you're well not, then you're, you're, not, were, you're not playing at World Cup you, in the big boy division yeah I mean you'll be you could win the challengers division but that's just that's that's not nearly as important as the champions division and these teams do not want to get relegated vicious is on the bubble right now you know and again brian bortle taking the walk getting shot in the break oh and all the way down the snake mikhail kovar making a huge move dodd do you yeah, mean yeah to kovar man look at this kovar stepping up right now gets a shot on saucman in the back munoz oh. is still alive oh kovar gets dinked out but munoz is going to have to deal with both bernikoff and Kirill. Oh, that's it? made a that's great all? move, but he just, <laughs> no one wanted to play behind him. Well, yeah. the problem is, again, 
Vicious having a really hard time staying alive. And then some of the guys that are, it's okay, so it's almost like, all right, we lost two off the break. Oh my God, we almost only three of us left alive. And then they just get a little bit too antsy and their bunkers get shot out of the bunkers. But hey, Munoz did make a great move. He got it there in the center. Uh, but Kovar, man, he talk about seizing the situation, seeing what's happening in front of you. That's exactly what Kovar did. He watched the bodies drop. He realizes no, no guns were looking his way. And he streaks down that side, gets a kill out of the back, which kind of dooms Munoz there. And then Munoz <laughs> gets taken down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and once you get so far up there, uh, especially Mikel Kovar's spot, you know, you, you have so many back shots. Then you start looking for the front players. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially when you get in there and nobody sees you because he's a heads-up paintball player. He's running down the snake. His head is up. He's looking at what's going on the field, dives in the snake to get two or three backs right away because they can't adjust in time. Yeah, and that's an important little element of strategy and skill. When you are making your moves, though, it's faster to actually, okay, I'm going to go to the back corner. I'm going to put my head down and just run as fast as I can to that bunker. It's much smarter to actually be looking at where the incoming paintballs are coming at and also what's happening in front of you because then you can change direction. You can stop for a second, let the stream go. There's a lot of things that can happen out there. So you see the best players looking for that. They keep <laughs> their eyes up. So, yes, yeah, so good job by Michael Kovar here stepping up on the snake side for Moscow Red Legion. They are up four points against Omaha Vicious. So... Omaha Vicious, do or die time for them. See yeah. you in just a second. Welcome back here, 2013 PSP West Coast Open out in Riverside, California. And if you're going to want your games to be, this is when you want your get to play your games out here. Though it's it ha, it's it's been hot, but it's it's kind of a dry heat, and the humidity is what really sucks your energy out. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's out in Riverside. I mean, it's a beautiful day. Don't get me wrong, the grass is green, everything's great. Grice moving the break by number eight right there. Shane Kobe getting the snake on the break against Moscow Red Legion, shooting number twelve. But Vicious is losing. Pantaly. The Dorito side is gone. They've lost three players on the break. So Vicious cannot stay alive off the break. It's been disaster for them during the first couple seconds of each point. They haven't been able to play with five bodies yet, and not only not play with five bodies, but they're losing a couple more. Yeah, very unfortunate. I mean, you know, if they could just stay alive and try and lock it down as they're getting down the snake. Shane Kobe made a great move right there. Um, it's a three-on-two situation. They have Zachary Sherman, Shane Kobe, and the snake. Oh, uh, that's a hammer. That's awesome. Kevin, Kevin Klum runs down Shane Kobe, who, hey, though, Shane had a tough day yesterday, but at least he's when getting he's been the out snake. there, he's getting in the he snake. He just can't keep his guys alive. Wow, this is this is very fast game that we're watching go down right here because Moscow Red Legions are proficiency at shooting off the break. They're just able to focus those incoming lanes of those outgoing lanes of fire. And, you know, Vicious is just having a real tough time out there staying alive in their bunkers. And, it, and that's one of those things that's like, okay, well, if you're out, if you have the ability to get shot by somebody, then you should have the ability to shoot the same person that's shooting you. And they, I don't know if it's a combination of, you I, know, I, it's a couple things, but the thing is, is that I don't know. Their, their shots just aren't as on as Moscow Red Legion right now. Yeah, and Moscow Red Legion, we we say time and time again, they're one of the most practicing uh, programs on the face of the earth. Oh yeah, that's they, their specialty. They, those, the those guys. One on ones and shooting on the break. That's what they. Snap shooting. Yeah. I mean, they, they've been that way for quite some time now, and they do put a lot of effort into, um, you know, playing professional paintball. They're, they're the quintessential paintball team. Yeah, I mean, those guys. They have a training facility in Moscow. They play paintball five days, four or five days a week. When they come out to tournaments, they come out two weeks in advance and find teams to play and scrimmage as much as they possibly can on the I've, layout. I've been at that training facility. You walk in, they got a little little uh, gym there, lifting weights, so it was, it was interesting to see it. Obviously, you didn't lift any. I did. Um, <laughs> so Neither of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I got to say about Moscow Red Legion is, is they go to practice to practice. They don't actually know, they don't go to practice to, to win every game. They go to practice to learn. The, that was good. They go to practice to learn the field, mm -hmm. win, lose, or draw. But they're learning constantly, constantly, and they're taking notes and they're making plays. So think about that when you go to practice. And they also have they have a big coaching squad too that that has the ability to scout the team, so they know what Vicious did, they know where Vicious went, and they know which players were playing in certain positions. So they knew who they were trying to shoot out out of those those specific positions and who was doing work for Vicious. But honestly, yesterday was a really tough day for Vicious and. 
And right now, they're having another tough day. They were 0-2 yesterday, looking like they're going to go 0-3 as the score now 5-0. to Vicious calls a timeout. Good call, I that. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and Legion, they're 1-1 one one right now, looking like they're going to go 2-1. and one. So, tough day again. This is the start of our very first game. Omaha Vicious struggling. We'll be right back after this. ANS Gear rocks the largest inventory of any paintball retailer. From our massive selection of guns to our endless supply of goggles, paint, loaders, tanks, and apparel. With your choice of free shipping on orders over $100 to next day, Saturday, or international shipping options, you get the products you need sooner. Shop now at ansgear.com. Going into these events, equipment's what matters. On our team, we're so talented. My job has fallen into like a role player's position. In order for Kyle or Brandon or Alex to make these moves, they need support so that we can win the tournament. And that's what I'm doing with this LV1. I'm able to go to a spot and get a lot of drop shots on people and really shoot just directly over a bunker where people think they're safe and the next thing you know, I'm getting those kills. My name is Oliver Lang from San Diego Dynasty and I shoot the LV1. So welcome back here as we are about midway, second half here of the Vicious Legion game. Next up, though, Houston Heat going to be taking on the Los Angeles Ironmen in a game where Houston Heat, they played pretty well yesterday. Uh, they lost to Moscow Red Legion, and then they defeated Vicious. And the Ironmen, they went one and one as well as they defeated Moscow Red Legion, but lost to Dynasty. So they're mm. both one and one. They're one and one, but right now Houston Heat's plus four. And you got the Ironman's minus two. So you mm -hmm. can see the differential by the wins, losses right there from mm -hmm. comparison. And with Russian Legion going here two and one now with a big differential here, this is this next game is gonna put that loser in a bad spot. Because Dynasty's two and oh as well. So it's it's gonna get real interesting real fast here. Yeah, exactly. Which means that the loser of this game, depending on what happens to them in the in the last game that they're gonna play, that could mean that the loser of the next game could be playing for relegation. Yeah, very disappointing. I, I, you know, I hope you know my buddy down there, Todd. He picks it up a little bit. His team comes together a little bit on the breakout. Moscow Red Legion, you see right there in the corner, going to work. Jason Wheeler shooting down the wire right now. You see the back line. Look at this, Chris. Five vicious guys alive on the break. So they they left. They got all five alive for the first point here. Let's see. This match. Let's see what happens. Let's see if he can battle himself out. You know, getting in the snake right now is Moscow Red Legion. All in the back line. You still see. Omar Vicious, but getting up in the snake. Mikhail Kovar catching one on the foot. Yes. Looks like, looks like and, all five alive still for Vicious. And, and two down. Two they're down moving for both sides of the field really well. So they got guy on Dorito two and snake one. So. Yeah, Brian Bortle picking up a G right there. Oh, but catching one in the face, Brian Bortle. Oh, just when we thought, hey, man, <sighs> finally made it into the snake, staying alive off the break, and then dying out of the bunker. It's unfortunately, you know, uh, Lucas Shuk and Kovar going down for Omaha, I mean for Moscow Red Legion, getting in the snake. Great move right there by Parker Rosenthal. Yeah, Parker Rosenthal is another one of those core members of the team along with Gordel and Sherman and also Chris Hooker, but uh, Chris Hooker not seeing a lot of playing time this year because we haven't had a lot of uh, back bunkers. Yeah, and he's one of the premier back players too. Shoots in lane number 11 right there going down. That's Bridnikov. That's a good G right there yeah, for that, Omaha that's Vicious. A big elimination hey, man. For them. Anytime you can get the 2012 Top Gun Award winner off the field, that's a that's a good point for you right there and a good kill. So here comes Parker Rosenthal. It's just him and the snake. So this could be potentially the turning point. Thing is, they do have 11 minutes and 15 seconds left. And Vicious is going to have to really get those off the break shots down to to have any chance of scoring quick points. Because you can't let Moscow get five guys out alive and want to come back down 5-0. And, and Moscow Red Legion is playing it right. They're up 5-0. Come and get us. Dig us out. And they don't they don't need to, to, to force it. Stay there. Make Vicious come to you. And that's what they're doing. Yeah, so Vicious now has two players in the snake. They really should win this point. They are, have a 4-2 a, a to two body advantage as only Golev and Wheeler are left alive. Wheeler doing some work for Moscow with six confirmed kills. And you know what, Zach Sherman, he's has, he has five confirmed kills. Really the only one out there getting it done for Vicious here in this game. But right now, Vicious is looking pretty solid. They are past the 50 yard line on the Dorito side. Oh God, I think that was Trevor Reeser. Who was that? 
Zach Sherman, whoever was in the 40-yard line drew over there narrowly avoided getting shot. He's a little bit careful over there. Yeah, hey, I, I think it's Phil Kane. Got yeah, it was Kane because no Sherman is with uh, Parker Rosenthal over here. Now Sherman's looking in the center. Ooh, nice job as they, they pinch take out. out Jason Wheeler. Yeah, they pinch Wheeler out of that back corner, and then here comes the hammer as Phil Kank runs down the Dorito side of the field to get that last kill, and then Sherman is gonna sprint that flag in as fast as he can. They need to preserve all the time as nine minutes and 47 seconds remain on that clock. And, and hey, it's 20 minute long game, so we're halfway through essentially, and now the score is five to one in favor still of Moscow Red Legion, but Vicious looked really good at that point. And, and they found a way to stay alive on the break. They, they didn't go out as wide, they stayed middle of the field, and uh, they won that point. <laughs> Keep, keep five alive and we'll win a point. Yeah, that's see, mysteriously five alive and <laughs> able to. But it's it's tougher than it looks out there. It <laughs> yeah, really it is. <laughs> is hard to keep five alive, uh, especially if you're playing a team that has those shots down on the break. But it, it really comes down to, okay, if you get four out alive, four on five, you can still win that point. Just you need uh, one of the four guys needs to step up and get a kill. That's what needs to happen. So and we'll Phil see. Phil King got going down that Dorito side. And mm -hmm. That was that was crucial. And then, like you said, Chris Bortle made the snake here, and we haven't really said his name name much, but he got in there and he got hit in the goggles. Yeah, so. we, he, he got one before that. I think he's the one that shot Mikhail Kovar in the, uh, going into the snake, which is good. You know, it's a good trade. Um, but unfortunately, he caught one just sitting on his bunker in the goggles. Well, it's one of those things where when you're down a lot of points, you're going to play a little bit more fast and loose than you normally would because you don't have the luxury of sitting in your bunker and looking and hoping that a, a lane develops. You have to get out there and try to create one. And so your survivability is going to be affected by that. Uh, it's just part of, of trying to push into guns. So here we go. Nine minutes and 47 seconds. Third, about 30 seconds before the start of this next point. Let's see if Vicious can keep five bodies alive off the break. Moscow Red Legion already has five players out there ready to roll. And we see Vicious start moving on the field. You know, I'm sure that Vicious is a little back on their heels. I mean, they've been getting peed up pretty good this weekend so far, unfortunately, you know, for them. Uh, I want to see them do much better. I, but they have such good talent on that team, they could shine at any time. On your screen right now, Vicious, You've got Zach Sherman. Here comes Shane Colby on the breakout, all the way to the snake in the break. Does he make it? Ooh, that's a, that's a, uh, I was oh. say, that's a risky play. Did he get shot going there or shot when he went, right when he got right, in? Right when he got in. Oh, but look at this up the center. Parker Rosenthal goes and drops the hammer on uh, Malloy. Yes, Burnikoff was in that center, but a little bit of fire we're seeing out of Vicious. They got nothing to lose at this point. So they're pushing fast and heavy. The only issue though for them right now at this point is that Kevin Klum is in the 50 yard line snake. Moscow though, three bodies alive, looking at two Omaha Vicious players. Phil Con uh, Kank got shot as well in the start of that match. So it's just Sherman and Munoz left alive to try to get it done for Vicious. There's the last player for Vicious walking out back center. So right when we thought they would maybe uh, get a couple points going here, Rushton said, nah, not gonna happen. They're yeah. just on point right now. They they're, are. They're playing yeah. really good. They picked it up yesterday, definitely from that loss they took. Um, and as I said yesterday, when they lose, they definitely learn from their losses. Um, you know, there's a 6-5 game against the Ironmen, so it was a close game. But they're one of those teams that goes back and looks at tapes until 1, 2 in the morning and says, and, okay, and not going to do that anymore. Yeah, and have three-hour meetings. Exactly. But it's paying off for them. You know, Moscow is in a... So one another rebuilding year. They had a rebuilding year last year because at the at the very beginning of 2012, uh, they lost some iconic, legendary players that went to Houston Heat to start that franchise. Fedorov, Mishka, Sergey, Sergey, Justin went to Damage. Mm -hmm. so Dave Baines went to Damage. So. so they had about five stars that they lost at the beginning of 2012. Then they brought in Marcelo Margot, who's now playing for the Ironmen, and they also had Axel Godin. Those guys played great for them. They also had Jason Wheeler, who was the Rookie of the Year last season uh so though it was a rebuilding year last season they either i wouldn't i don't want to say they got lucky at all because they intentionally went after those players but they got some really good guys and those guys contributed greatly so they took a couple second places and played pretty decent last year didn't win any tournaments in 2012 um, but then they lost axel and went back to the tauntauns and they lost marcelo went back to the ironman so then they had to reboot again 
and then they had dropped down into the challengers division but they're looking pretty solid right now i really like the pickup of kevin klum another frenchman yeah amazing snake for playing them. great yeah it's two seasons in a row they went to, to france to try to find their snake player <laughs> and they also got michael kovar from yeah. uh, san antonio x factor who had moved to belgium uh, to run a uh, a paintball field out there and breakout spa yeah breakout spa so and those are two good pickups i think that you know kovar's a vet he's been playing for a long time um kind of a roll of the dice player though sometimes he's out there just dominating and sometimes he's catching some balls yeah he got it he, he started slow yesterday actually and yeah. then now he seems to be coming into his own because he's seen clume he's like oh man this yeah. guy's out playing me right now well, i better step it up yeah kevin played really well towards the end of the last event and it, but it's good because they can both contribute and that's really going to give you a little bit more legs and keep you guys fast out there oh and Bordo slides a little you can just see he's bunker. just beside himself. He's just frustrated right now. I can see, you know, look at their back line. They're doubling up almost every bunker in the back, trying to, you know, just stay alive, Maddie, and get out and dip out, which they do. It looks like right there. Oops. And, 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 you know, like that, that Aztec on the snake side here, it looks, like you said, it looks easy to get to. It's it's not. It's, and losing two more on your screen. It's just falling. Fish's bodies are falling off. Left and right here. Well, this is the last point if Moscow takes this one, which it looks like they're going to do because it's just Phil K and they come and on Trevor Reeser. Feeding frenzy here. Oh, and Berenikov takes one right to the head from his own player. He <laughs> <laughs> and so that final horn is going to sound, and it is going to be a victory for Moscow Red Legion as they take this first one with a score of 7-1. to one. You know, good, good game right there. They played very, very well. And... Uh, you know, they played nice and crisp, and, you know, there's really not much to say. I mean, unfortunately for Omaha Vicious, 7-1 loss, that's going to put them in a very, very difficult position right now. Yeah. It, well, not only are they 0-3, but every single game that they've played so far at this event, the score's been 7-1. Yeah, they're minus uh, 18 now. That is oh, that's the just... The next game is against the Ironman. You can't get much so worse than that. It's weird, though, because the, the, the Vicious that came to uh, Dallas... And the Vicious that came to this event are similar. Uh, but MAO in Chicago, my god, they looked amazing. So it's like two completely different teams. I, I don't know, I, I can't even really diagnose the issue other than the fact that they didn't really have, they weren't able to get the shots off the break. Um, so they were, I mean, once you're getting destroyed off the break, nothing works. Your game plans can't work if you don't have bodies alive off the break. Now, obviously that's part of the game plan, but still, Really frustrating turn of events here for uh, Vicious, but they shouldn't hang their heads too low. They still have one more game left. And then also, uh, you know, they, they yeah, they could, can't hang their head low because it's a good chance they're going to be playing in the relegation game. And if they win that one, they stay in the Champions League. If they lose, they go down to the Challenge Division. On your screen right there is our big stats crew from PayBoxes.com doing a good job over there. Our friend Matt Schuster, a bunch of guys over there putting it all together for you guys. So next game coming at you is going to be Houston Heat and the Los Angeles Ironman as this bracket is getting pretty, uh, it's getting pretty ugly. So it looks like we have the uh, next member of our broadcast team, Lauren Kelly, she's down on the sidelines with one of the members from Moscow Red Legion. Let's check it out. I am down here on the sidelines with Jason Wheeler of the Russians. Congratulations on that win. You guys came out really strong today. What do you talk about after day one? You went one for one losing to Dynasty. What do you talk about to make sure you come out here and perform as highly as you can? Um, well, I think the main thing for us is uh, shooting off the break. Uh, when we shoot people off the break, we control people. And uh, I think that game, we shot at least uh, one or two guys a game. So uh, really, we really fixed it last night. We spoke about who's shooting where and spreading the guns, and it seemed to work. What specific changes did you make to strategy or play that made the difference, do you think? I think doubling up guns on sides that we know they push. Um, our coaches are doing a great job in the stands every day, sitting there watching where everyone goes, how people run, if it's deep, shallow, direct, whatever. We know exactly where people are going to run, so we're shooting for that. All right, well, it was a tough loss for Vicious, who are 0 for 3 right now. Next up, we have Heat versus Ironmen. We'll see who takes that win.